What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. So it's been a couple weeks and the Hermitcraft server has made a ton of progress since we've last checked in on them. So much has happened on the Hermitcraft server besides base building there have been a ton of pranks. The first one we're looking at here is of course the giant boat built over at the Big Eyes shopping district. And of course there are some weird occurrences as well such as the rumbling on the server and the giant moon. There's definitely some huge things about to be happening on Hermitcraft. If I had to guess, I would say it's going to revolve around the release of 1.18, which is coming out on November 30th. Nothing's for sure though, we can only wait and see. Let's now check out some amazing builds on the Hermitcraft server. First up, you can see here B-Dubs built a shop in the shopping district, or I guess a few shops specifically for Ethos since he's known for shopping so much at all the shopping districts. They were actually fairly smart about this shop and started selling boats that they got from the uh, boat bomb prank and they also were selling TNT as well. Beatubs has also been working on his own base. He put in a bunch of farmland around his base. He likes to farm his stuff manually just because that kind of keeps him entertained with the game. He also decided to put in a brand new building over here which I think looks amazing. I love this combination of all the blocks that he used. It really fits in of course with the moon and the rest of the builds over in this area. Next up Docm has been doing a ton of work. This right here is the chunk suppressor he built which does most of the magic for him uh, when he's teleporting by dropping paper or having infinite rockets whatever it is this chunk suppressor is usually the cause of it but he wanted to make it look a bit nicer so he built the shadow dome which was actually a super impressive way of covering up this monstrosity of rails and redstone I really can't imagine how long it's taken to mine all the deep slate and copper that they've been using in their projects throughout Dokim and Rindog's base Next up, False Symmetry has been doing a ton of work in her area of the world. She's added multiple new buildings over here and even added some more on top of the floating island. I'm really loving the way that her area of the world is coming along. She of course built these in the same style as her starter base, using a lot of mushroom blocks, a lot of red combined with the white and wood. It's really a very cool look and should definitely make a very cool area once she does all the builds that she wants to do in this area. The flying island of course was looking a little plain on top before, so of course she added in some texturing on top, a bunch of trees, and a build that fits in with the area below. So now it really looks like this chunk of land was ripped straight out of the ground even though that it had buildings and trees on top of it which I think it looks even more amazing now. Gymnite has been doing some detail work on her woodland mansion adding a ton of birch on the outside which I think gives it a really nice texture. She also worked on a new enchantment room for a woodland mansion. I think this is a super cool design using the chains to float the bookshelves off the ground around the enchantment table. This is definitely a super cool design and super unique. She also did a shader look at her whole area so far. Of course she's got her starter house, her custom trees, and of course the woodland mansion as well as her shopping district. Definitely a lot going on in this area. Some amazing builds so far this season. I'm really happy that Gemini Tay was able to join Hermitcraft this season and she's done a great job of building some amazing stuff so far. Next up the Bodum crew has been doing a ton of work on their bases of course but they did come over and prank the Big Eyes shopping district by building a giant boat over the shopping district which gave a huge shaded area so that mobs can spawn and fill the boats that they had already left with the boat bomb. Unfortunately, this has already been taken down, but it was a very cool prank and I'm glad to see that Grian actually did help clean it up since they did build this right over their shopping district. Grian has also been working a lot on his base. He's built up a huge portion of the Midnight Alley, which I think looks really amazing. This new build that he included on the right side looks really incredible with all the diagonals and everything that he included in it. This right here is a build that is going to lead to the darker section of the alley which Scar is going to work on as Grian said, so I'm really excited to see what Scar decides to do in that portion of the base. This build is really coming along, I'm absolutely loving the Midnight Alley so far. He's also done some work on texturizing the outside. Him and Pearl actually worked a lot on this. Uh, he built some custom trees as well, which all look great. And, you know, maybe led a little bit to Mumbo asking him for his own rating on the trees. 
Impulse has also been doing some work on his base, not only on the outside, but the inside as well. He's created a cactus and a bamboo farm, both of which work super cool because they actually slime block launch all their items into hoppers where they go into a super smelter. He said he wants this room to be really fun and I think he's done a great job of that so far. I love seeing these slime block launchers being used on the server this season, especially with Impulse and Zadaf. He's also done some work on actually connecting his base up to the Giga base, which I think he did a great way of doing. Of course, the factory is going to have some pollution, so instead of polluting the ocean behind him, he decided to go and pollute Mumbo's base, which I think is hilarious and also looks really good. He used a lot of different blocks here. You can see some raw gold ore blocks, some redstone, a lot of nether blocks. Definitely a great combination to give some pollution here. Corrales has also been doing a ton of work. He wants to really stop Bodum from being able to attack the Big Eye Shopping District, so he built up a huge battleship outside of his Paradise Island that should help protect against the Bodum crew. This is a great build. It really reminds me of Corrales' base from Season 7. Of course, Corrales had the huge city base where he had a ton of boats and everything, and this one really reminds me of that since Corrales hasn't been doing that much of the huge building like he did in last season. This boat is super detailed though. I absolutely love the look of it, and hopefully it helps a little bit against the Bodum crew. Mumbo has been working a lot on his base. His base is by far one of my favorites of this season. He's gone so far out of his comfort zone with this one. This right here, he is adding all the pathways in between the buildings on top of the armchair, so you can actually get to every single building here. It makes it look much more natural and like you could actually live in it, which I think is a great addition to this base. He also decided instead of doing smaller buildings on top of the base as well, he wanted something huge that the buildings were kind of built around, so he decided to build a temple. He definitely did a lot of work on actually designing this in a separate world before he built it here, but I think the final product of this looks really amazing and really finalizes the outside of this base. Of course, he's got some small details that he's still working on, like all the rope bridges that he's doing. He's going to build some between his base and Green's as well to kind of connect that up a bit more. Definitely some very interesting building going on right here, and I absolutely love it. Definitely peace, love, and plants. Pearlescent Moon has also been doing a ton of work on her base. She decided she didn't really like the bottom of it, so she did a huge expansion to it, which I think makes it look really incredible. She also has this bridge right here, which she decided to build a waterfall and a llama in. Very fitting, of course, with the hat that Scar made for her. Besides terraforming underneath the octagon, Rindog has also been doing a lot of work over on this portion of the peninsula. Over here he made some vast farmland and a huge windmill, which I think looks really amazing with all the deep slate builds behind it. It's such a contrast, but it looks so good together. I'm really loving all the builds that Doc M and Rin are doing and all the terraforming that they've done in these areas. Definitely shaping up to be a super interesting season, and I love the way that they retaliated against Bodum as well. Tango Tech and B-double-O decided to re get revenge against Bodum as well by building a giant floating eye named Pew Pew. This eye, of course, is also a trap and will release 60 Ravagers down on the Bodum when the book is opened up. While the prank itself was not only hilarious, I absolutely love the way that Tango did redstone for this project. He decided to do some technically wireless redstone by doing redstone through the nether, which is absolutely genius. He decided to use a dispenser or a dropper that would throw an item through the nether portal and then activate a series of redstone there, which would then trigger another dropper which would activate an item inside the eye and then release the ravagers down onto Bodum. Super cool redstone, definitely one of my favorite ideas so far this season. And if you haven't seen any of the Bodum videos yet, definitely go check them out. The prank has already happened and it was absolutely hilarious to watch. Wells Knight has finally done some progress on his megabase as well. He's been away for a while, but he's come back to the Hermitcraft server and as you can see, he is on the inside of that giant floating island that he built and he's actually working on some actual pathways and things that you can walk on inside of here. I'm super excited for Wells Knight build. I absolutely love the huge floating island and I'm really excited to see everything that he does with it. Suma as well has worked on his megabase a lot. Of course, he has so many builds going on this season, being both Suma and Evil Suma, 
but this build right here is his base. He wanted to break out of his comfort zone with building as well, so he worked on this, creating all these shapes and everything, and then adding in the details after, which he said was actually a super new way of doing things for him, and he really enjoyed it. I think this build turned out amazing. Of course, he's got so many builds over here that look great. Definitely a super interesting season for him so far with all the different ideas going on. Zadaf has also been working a lot on his tower. Right here, he's got a villager breeder that is feeding villagers down into the rest of the floors below. I absolutely love all the science experiments that have been going on with Zadaf so far this season. Definitely super interesting, and his brewing room is one of the coolest I have ever seen. His slime block launcher system hits items right down into the hoppers, the exact items that you need. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely go check out his channel and see all the work he's done over on this tower so far. Definitely super interesting and fun to watch. That is all that we have for today's episode, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like on this video, and if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.